Hobo to start off by telling us uh, what's actually happening out here today. Yeah, a tremendous day of football today with the McDonald's Hobart Carnival uh, where we have over 1,200 children playing football for the weekend from all over the state representing our junior association regions as their largest participation sport. We take pride in the number of junior players we have playing and this is a perfect opportunity for them to show their skills and, and most importantly have fun throughout the day. How important do you think it is to get uh, players from all around the state in one spot? Yeah, it's important. There's three carnivals a year, this one and uh, Launceston coming in a couple of weeks' time. It's a great opportunity to have our best players you know, from Hobart playing against the best players from Launceston, playing against the best players from the North West Coast. It brings the uh, state together. Uh, it's united in, in football and, and certainly united in participation and enjoyment. Is it in aid of anything? Is it a competition or is it just a, just a carnival to have, have a kick-off? Yeah, it's certainly it's a reward for the season. We pick teams early in the year, our development squads and each junior association looks after them with the support of McDonald's. Now we have a junior association carnival where we're able to identify players, perhaps enter state teams uh, further on in their footballing career, but also represent their region and we see that as a, a perfect opportunity to complement their club football. And uh, how many do you think will go through into, into state teams from this back? Yeah, we have a number of a number of teams uh, that we pick. We have a 13s and 14 state team. We also have NTC National Training Centre programs as well. So the opportunities are there for children all around the state that go to the next level and are able to be identified to certainly continue their career through the talent football player pathway, but also the community pathway through their clubs. Most important. John, we've had a young Tasmanian signed on a contract by the Melbourne Heart, a youth team contract. Do you reckon there's any more budding future players here? Yeah, certainly I think so. It's a, it's a tremendous, uh, I, I guess, boost for, for Tasmania football when we're able to send players away. Jeremy Walker's done all the right things. He's uh, went away, joined a team in, in Melbourne and was identified with the Melbourne Heart. He's been training there and, and he's the uh, in the first batch of... Uh, youth contracts for the Melbourne Heart Club, so I envisage there'd be plenty more out of not only today moving through the state systems, but also moving into uh, the Honda A-League youth setup. How, how much do you think the A-League has their eyes on Tasmania as a bit of a breeding ground for, for young talent? Yeah, I see it as a, an untapped resource at the moment. Uh, more A-League clubs, are, there's, there's been a presence last year with the Mariners, this year again with Melbourne Victory and Brisbane Raw coming down. We've got our finals uh, scheduled in with the A-League uh, pre-season fixture next weekend, which will give certainly the talent scouts about those clubs the opportunity to see some of their best players play, but certainly the opportunity to come down and look at the junior players and, and look at our state systems that are in place. Are you able to tell us where we're at with the, um, the state league? Yeah, state league is, uh, is uh, moving to an exciting time. We're just about to present a business case to our board. Um, we're in constant consultation with our clubs, updating them. We have the support of them to continue to explore the model. Um, we're, we're going to present a business case to our board which will enable us to see what the next steps are and what the financial implications are for clubs, but certainly we remain very hopeful that we'll have a state league playing best against the best in 2013 in Tasmania. Have there been any developments in regards to funding and finances? Yeah, we'll be talking once this business case is uh, our firm, we'll know the amount we need, to, we need to go to the market with and we'll certainly look to be launching a, a certainly new marketing plan and, and, and a new strategy of how we do football. Um, to entice people to come into the game and, and enter into the largest participation sport. Do you have any top coaches here looking at the talent? Yeah, like Dean May yeah today we have our NTC state coaches and our technical director Kurt Reynolds here. Uh, they're looking particularly at that under 12, 13, 14 age group, um, looking at players that perhaps identification for under 13 and skill programs that are coming up at that level. We have other venues at the under 10s and 11s where we have people there too, watching the talent come through. But today is, is about talent identification, but it's about uniting the football community around the state and, and giving children the best opportunity to play against players they wouldn't normally have the opportunity to play against.